Good morning. Welcome to our middle school Lenten Mass. Uh, we want to welcome our parishioners and to school families as we journey the season of Lent together as a community. Join us in song and prayer today as we come close to God through the Eucharist. The question of the week is, what do I seek this first week of Lent? Why do I knock, seek, and ask? Our celebrant this morning is Father Tom Lamana. Thank you, Father Tom, for being with us today. Please stand and join together in singing our gathering song, Led by the Spirit, number 125, number 125. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My sisters and brothers, as we come together today, uh, in this first week during the Lenten season, we are called to seek out the Lord but it's a call that comes with a promise that not only will God answer, but that God is waiting for us to seek God out, waiting for us to go in search of the Lord, wanting to be in relationship with us. And so let's pause and ask that anything that's in our hearts that gets in the way of us on that journey, especially our sins, that God will continue to remove. Lord Jesus Christ, you come to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O Lord, bestow on us a spirit of always pondering what is right and of hastening to carry it out. And since without you we cannot exist, may we be enabled to live according to your will. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated and listen to our readings. A 
reading from the book of Esther. Queen Esther, seized with mortal anguish, had recourse to the Lord. She, re- she lay prostrate upon the ground, together with her handmaids, from morning until evening, and said, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, blessed are you. Help me, who am alone and have no help but you, for I am taking my life in my hand. As a child, I used to hear from the books of my forefathers that you, O Lord, always free those who are pleasing to you. Now help me, who am alone and have no one but you, O Lord my God. And now come to help me, an orphan. Put in my mouth persuasive words in the presence of the lion, and turn his heart to hatred for our enemy, so that he and those who are in league with him may perish. Save us from the, from the hand of our enemies, Turn our mourning into gladness and our sorrows into wholeness. The word of the Lord. Our response is, Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at the holy temple and give thanks to your name. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things, your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what has been done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which one of you would hand his son a stone when he asked for a loaf of bread? Or a snake when he asked for a fish? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets, the gospel of the Lord. There's a picture. Um, It's a picture of Jesus standing at a door. It's a painting. And the door doesn't have a handle on it. And so in the picture, what it's suggesting is that Jesus stands at the door of our hearts and there's no handle. That we have to open it from the inside. This reading really is that. Or that painting is about this reading that God isn't reluctant to answer us. God isn't waiting and and sitting back. I'm sure I've said this to you before. It's not like our relationship with the Lord is some cosmic game of hide and seek. 
But instead, God wants to be close to us. Jesus wants to be with us. It's why Jesus becomes incarnate. It's God's desire to answer our prayers. And I think that's important because we have to have faith in that. That helps our prayer lives. You know, what we want and what we seek, our desires are a good thing and a place where we find God loving us. And I say that because sometimes we think, no, our desires are mostly going to be bad, so we have to get rid of them. That's not it. It's about understanding the difference between the good ones and the ones that lead us toward love and the selfish ones. So, Jesus stands at the door waiting, knocking, ready to enter, ready to answer when we reach out. Now, sometimes in our lives, we don't realize the love that's around us. Sometimes we're surprised. When I was uh, a sophomore in high school, I was 16 years old, it was the end of the year, so I wasn't much older than you are now. My older brother was getting married. And my older brother and I uh, had a close relationship. I loved him. Uh, when he went away to college, I really missed him. He used to beat up on me all the time because he was an older brother and he could. And, you know, verbally jousting and, and, and I suppose uh, going at me. And so anyway, I thought, you know, this guy doesn't really like me that much. And when he got engaged he asked me to be in the wedding party. And I was floored, absolutely floored, because he had really good friends and so forth. And I couldn't believe it. And I remember saying to my mother, I can't believe he'd ask me that. And she said, well, why? He loves you. He's your brother. He loves you. Sometimes we have expectations and we just don't know. And sometimes that's true in our relationship with the Lord. That God's just kind of out there, and, and God is, you know, yes, I know in my head that God loves me, but do I know it in my heart of hearts? Do I realize it? That that's an important piece to this journey for us as Christians. And so I would say to you, knock, seek, trust, and sometimes realize that it's not us that has to do the knocking, but it's Jesus that's doing the knocking. And we respond. Okay, how do we do that? How do we do that? Because these are all really nice ideas, but they can get lost a little bit. Prayer can be a simple thing. It doesn't have to be this, you know, kind of a journey with a treasure map and we're trying to find some secret that's hidden. Start with reading Scripture. You're capable of that. And think about it. Reading the gospel stories and kind of thinking about, well, what does this really mean? You know, there's stories you've heard at church all your life. There's stories, though, that, you know, sometimes when we're younger, we kind of hear them but don't listen to them. We hear, but we don't always listen because we don't understand. Because we're in first, second, or third grade, which is a really great thing to be. But as we get older, our capacity to understand grows. So you're at a point where reading these gospel stories, they might strike you in a different way because you notice things that you didn't notice before, partially because you can. That's a simple way to pray. And any of the adults in here will tell you that really never stops. That is, our ability to see something different that we hadn't seen before. We've heard it, but we hadn't noticed it in the way we notice it now. And that's kind of the beauty of Scripture, is that it always is alive because the Spirit is active. And so that's hopefully a practical suggestion of how do we have this relationship with the Lord. Lastly, at the very end, the golden rule. This is the golden rule in Matthew's gospel. Do unto others what you would have them do unto you. 
And then Matthew adds this line, this is the law and the prophets. Now for us, we kind of think, okay, that's nice. But if you were Jewish, if you are Jewish, or if you were Jewish in the first century, it would have had a very different meaning. Because the law and the prophets is technical language or kind of code language for all of Scripture. All of Scripture, the law and the prophets and the wisdom literature. And so what Jesus is saying is, this thing I'm telling you is a way to summarize the whole Old Testament. The whole thing, and it's a lot. And we have really different images of God, and some of them are hard to understand, and we don't get it. God is acting like this great warrior for Israel, and Jesus is saying all of it comes down to this. Do unto others what you would have them do to you. And sometimes we need those those summaries like that. Our relationship is a relationship with a God who wants to know us, who wants us to know God, who wants to be known by us. It's a God who's eager. In that relationship that's kind of God and me, but in the relationships around us too. And sometimes we get surprised by the love that's around us. Let's stand and let's bring our prayers before the Lord. We pray for our Catholic Church, for Pope Francis, and for the people of God around the world to celebrate Mass today. Locally, we pray for Archbishop Peter, for our parish priests, for our Dominican sisters, and for lay workers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Lord as we honor Lenten traditions of prayer, fasting, learning, and serving. We pray for our middle school global service project, for our service to our sister parish, St. Wenceslas in Columbia. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the United States. We pray for a renewed spirit of generosity within our local communities this Lent, especially to communities struggling with storms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for St. Patrick's Church and School. We pray for our parish staff and for our priests. We especially pray for those who are preparing to receive the Holy Spirit in the Sacrament of Confirmation on March 12th. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our community who are sick today in mind, spirit, or body. May these who are are so dear to us be blessed with hope and peace by our prayers and kindness. We pray for Debbie Rupert, mother of Ellie Rupert, for Joy Mumford, mother of Shay McMail, for Joe Hiller, father of Matthew and Stephanie Hiller, for Father Henry O., as he heals from heart surgery. For Monica Eliaqua, mother of Gabriel. For Patricia Miller, mother of Mr. Miller, as she heals from peacemaker surgery. And for students, teachers, families experiencing illness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and for their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, we bring before you all our prayers. As you hear them and answer them, continue to strengthen in us faith in you, faith in your merciful love. We make them always in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.